see if we can make this work. It might work. Yeah. So no epidermis, right? It's not fair. This is supposed to be derm path session. Well, when we have a nodule with no epidermis on it, and we may have nothing around it or a little fat around it, it means we're in the subcutis, right? Is if it's something that came from a you know a, an outpatient clinic, no one you know if you, if you can get it out without anything attached or with a little fat attached, that means it's probably a subcutaneous based nodule or deep dermal nodule that's pushed in the subcutis. Um, you know, if it's deeper than that, you're gonna have some muscle with it or something. So, any ideas for what to do with this thing? This is a little hard because the, the lighting on these is always hard to get, and also slides uh, fade very quickly with this. But see the background is pale blue? Can, is that coming across? Can you see that a little bit? It's mixoid. So mixoid is, is hard um, on light microscope to project because it, it, it washes out and it's hard with the white balancing. So sometimes it, it looks blue, sometimes it looks like white. But basically we've got a nodule that's mixoid or mucin, uh, whichever you like, mucinous mixoid. And then it's got some little bland spindle cells floating in it. No atypia. Some small blood vessels here and there. That, that looks like atypia, it's just a blob of, of the mixoid stuff. So mixoid stains a little differently from case to case, depending on your lab's H&E, how much mixoid's there, how it was fixed. I don't know why, but there's always variability, even on the same case. Sometimes if I repeat an H&E, it'll look darker or lighter than it did the last time. So um, in any case, so we got a nodule in the subcutis or the deep dermis. It's hypocellular and mixoid. And I'm just going to tell you, if I looked around for a while, I didn't see any hypercellular zones. I didn't see any atypia. Got some small blood vessels in it and these small little cells that are either spindled or trying to find a good one. Sometimes they look like little, little bean shaped nuclei. I'm not getting a good, oh, there we go, there we go. If I can get it in focus. See like a tiny little bean shape with a little blob of pink cytoplasm, a little belly of cytoplasm on it. So that's the typical cell that we're dealing with here. So any takers? Any other ideas? Mixoma. Yeah, mixoma, good. So this is a mixoma. And if you have one in the muscle, we call it intramuscular mixoma. That's kind of outside of the realm of derm path. And in the skin, we can call it a cutaneous mixoma or a superficial angiomyxoma is another name because the ones that are superficial tend to have more vessels to them. Uh, I'm still not totally clear if they actually are the same thing um, or if they are two different tumors. I, I kind of feel the latter, that they probably are two different tumors because they seem to present differently and they look a little bit different. But they do both have the key features that they have a mixoid background with very low cellularity. And they have these small little bean-shaped or sometimes spindled cells. The other thing you can sometimes see in this and in, in kind of a lot of tumors that have a bunch of mixoid background, sometimes you'll see cells that are are, have like vacuoles filled with mucin. And when you see this in like a, in a cell that looks atypical, like in a, in a, like some sarcomas with mixoid change, we call them pseudo lipoblasts. But you can see similar kind of bubbly mucin filled or mixoid filled cells in mixomas also. They just don't have any nuclear atypia, okay? And then you may have some delicate branchy vessels. Uh, this case, has, yeah, there's a little bit right there. See that? And you don't want to get the get confused and think that that's the the chicken wire vessels of mixoid liposarcoma. Uh, this tumor otherwise does not look like mixoid liposarcoma, and I've got videos about that if you want to go see. Mixoid liposarcoma almost never occurs in the skin, so I mean there have been rare reported cases. I've never seen one though in the skin. All right, so the superficially angiomyxomas or cutaneous myxomas, um, they uh, are benign, but they can sometimes recur. They tend to be multinodular. They sometimes have scattered neutrophils in them. That's a nice clue when you see it, but you don't have to have that. They sometimes have entrapped um, adnexal structures, which often have cystic change, like sweat ducts or hair follicles in them. And they can be, in some cases, associated with what syndrome? Carney. Carney syndrome, that's right. Carney syndrome, um, which has a variety of different things that occur in it, and you can go look up a, a list of all of those. But the uh, Carney syndrome, uh, it has they have cutaneous myxomas as one of the many things that they can have. 
And in particular, I think of Carney when I see either a patient with multiple myxomas or if the myxoma is located in one of three sites, it tends to be more likely to be associated with Carney's, and that's the ear, the eyelid, or the nipple. For some reason, it, the myxomas in Carney's are more often at, at those uh, sites. So those are times, otherwise, if I see a myxoma, I don't really like make a big deal about saying they need to go work up for Carney's, but, but uh, in any case, it's good to know about. But they are benign, but they can sometimes recur. The main thing that you wanna know, if you got an older adult and you think it looks like a myxoma, or, you know, especially in the extremities of an older adult, the one kind of common sarcoma that can mimic myxoma is called myxofibrosarcoma. Looks very myxoid and has hypocellular areas sometimes, but it has atypia. It has pleomorphism. Even the lowest grade form of myxofibrosarcoma must have some pleomorphism to recognize, to make the diagnosis. And they tend to have bigger, longer vessels rather than these small branchy vessels. But you might, the main thing is I go look for, if I think it's a myxoma, look for any areas of hypercellularity and any areas with pleomorphism or mitotic activity, then be very careful. And the reason myxofibrosarcoma is important to know about uh, for dermpath and dermatologists is because A, it's a relatively common sarcoma, B, it can mimic myxoma in some areas, but if you get a big enough sample, you'll find atypia, and C, it um, occurs in the skin or subcutis about 50% of the time. So it's a tumor that, that is uh, reasonably often, or it has a fair chance of being encountered by dermatologists. So this case had none of those bad features, it was just a myxoma.